よろしくお願いします。Hi! Hi! Who here has ever been bullied before? Anyone? Did anyone enjoy it? Ah, no, we didn't enjoy it. Who wants to go for another go? Hopefully, none of you do. Because I've been there, and let me tell you, I did not enjoy it. Today, I want to talk to you guys about just a little bit of myself and how I cope with being bullied. Okay, so story time. Let me just sit down, get a little bit more comfortable. You guys get comfortable too. So imagine this the first day of kindergarten. It's extremely nervous. Well, I'm extremely nervous. I know nobody there. I have zero friends. At one point, I remember I had a certain amount of people around me, and then we started to talk. And then we started talking about clothing. One kid would say to me, Hey, I like your shirt. Another kid would say, Hey, I like your socks. And then I said, Hey, I like your pants. And then everybody there started laughing and laughing. And I was so confused because I had no idea what I did. Can anyone tell me what I did wrong? Because I sure can't. Later that day, the teacher she came up to me and then she said to me, Tiger, <clears throat> the word pants. In Japanese, it actually means underwear. So I basically said to all those kids, hey, I like your underwear. <laughs> now I see why everybody was laughing at me. And now I'm older, I understand what was so funny about it, and I can laugh about it too. Also, I realized that they weren't trying to hurt me or bully me, and it was actually inside of my head. But of course, It did stress me out a bit as a kindergarten student. One of the reasons was because I grew up in a household where we spoke English and Japanese. I lived with my grandparents and my parents. My grandparents, they would speak Japanese to me. My mom and dad, my mom, she's Japanese, but she's an amazing English speaker. My father, Australian, and he's an amazing Japanese speaker. So when I was speaking inside my house, We never had any translation errors or anything because everybody more or less understood what I was talking about. So, when the first time I went out of my comfort zone into a place I've never been before with people I don't know, kids I don't know, I didn't realize that these translation errors could happen and it could be a problem for me. Now, primary school. I went into primary school, and the first thing that happened to me was. I started to get bullied. I got picked on and I got called names. I remember in a young age, people would call me certain names so often that it would make me, want, make me cry. I want to go home. I remember they would not choose me for certain events and they would not let me participate. And as a little kid, that can really scar you and traumatize you. And even as my age right now, I can still remember it. I remember as I got older in school, I would have problems with teachers too. I remember one incident. A teacher, she was angry and she came up to me and then she said, I don't know how it is in your country, but in Japan. See, that didn't make any sense to me because I've been in Japan since I was one years old and I identify myself. As Japanese and Australian. And I didn't realize that some people could see that as my weakness because I didn't. Another similar in、um, incident I went to a restaurant with one of my Japanese friends, and then the waiter, waitress, would come up to us and they would ask us something, but they would talk to my more Japanese looking friend. See, that didn't make sense to me either because. My Japanese was as native as his was. 
And like I said before, I identified myself as Japanese and Australian. So it was, I couldn't understand it, why people do that to me. And then I realized there were times people intended to hurt me. But also, there were times when people would support me. Then I realized the negative experiences, they stay inside of our heads and they have more power over us. Those events, they made me feel small, they hurt me, but I did overcome them and I want to show you guys how I overcame them and I hope this can help you guys. The first thing was family support for me and I have a method from here and I want you guys to hear that because it's definitely going to be useful. Okay, one time, my dad, he sat me down and then he said to me, Tiger, you're a fish. And little Tiger, he would say, no, I'm not a fish. What are you, what are you talking about? I'm not a fish. Do you guys know the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Yeah? Well, I think words do hurt you. And my dad thought that also. So he thought about how he could improve on that idea and make it more realistic. And then he came up with the fish. See, the word fish, it doesn't necessarily make you feel positive or negative, but it conjures a sense of curiosity. So after my dad, he called me a fish, I realized what people say to me doesn't define who I am. My beliefs define who I am. And that was a massive confident boost that I got from my family. Also, <clears throat> did you know, I sometimes got body shamed when I was little, and something as an older too. There are several times when people say that I'm hairy or really pimply, because I hit puberty much earlier than the average student. So honestly, I felt like a monster. But as I grew older, I started to feel more confident in my own body because I was slightly bigger, faster, stronger, and I didn't feel small anymore, well, physically and metaphorically speaking. And that was my strength in the same way people thought that my double nationality was a weakness. But reframing it changed it for me. So reframing how you, how you see yourself can turn your weaknesses into strengths. And that, I think that is true for everyone. And one more thing I gained from that experience was, as I got more confident in myself, people, they started treating me better. They started to treat me with respect. And then I realized, accepting what people said to me, that's what made me a victim. That's what made it easier for people to pick on me. Let me slightly change the subject. When I walked onto the stage today, and then I decided to sit down on the red carpet, what did you all think? When you looked at my fashion sense, my hairstyle, what were your opinions on me? And then when I started to stand up and present myself more like a TEDx speaker, what was your opinion? And tell me, how much of that should I put on myself as weight? And how much do you really know about me? I have another story. I remember one time that my mom, she said to me, hey, I remember you having fun at school. But the funny thing is, I didn't have very good memories about school. 
And then I realized from her perspective, I actually was enjoying school. And in her head, I was having fun, but inside my head, I wasn't having fun. When you guys feel stress or anxiety or the painful eyes from others, and then you feel scared and hurt and you don't know what to do, you will have to stop for one second and remember that, that that's all inside of our heads. Today, before I leave, I want to leave you guys with one last thought. And I want you guys to remember this your whole life. You are a fish. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I hope I get to talk to you guys again soon. Arigatou gozaimashita. Proud dad moment.